just a little bit of basic science, and a lot of people said they found this sort of interesting but also very helpful, is just to give you a concept of what the disease is that we're dealing with. So this slide is a picture uh, at a microscopic level of normal breast tissue. So the points I would uh, bring out is that each of the breast cells are, are pretty uniform in, sh in size. The two arrows show the dark bits in the middle of the, of the uh, breast cell, which is the nucleus. We all have nuclei in the middle of our, our cells. You need the nucleus because it's the powerhouse of the cell. It's what's responsible for helping that cell to grow and live and do the job that it's supposed to do. On the right is a picture of an invasive breast cancer. And the differences, which I hope you will see, is number one, the size of the cells are actually quite bizarre. Many of them are bigger compared to normal breast cells, but they're unusual shape. And probably the most important thing I would bring to your attention is see the black areas? That's the size of the nucleus in a breast cancer cell. So look at that in the myriad of breast cancer cells compared to these little tiny um, nuclei in normal cells. So that sort of gives you a concept that the nucleus of a breast cancer cell is what drives the cancer to multiply, to grow, to invade, to spread, to resist treatment. So you're really dealing with two very, very different uh, biological entities uh, when you're dealing with cancer cells. Now a bit of basic anatomy. Um, this is a cartoon of a woman's breast um, and the lines are actually the networks of lymphatic tissues that drain um, fluids and allow cellular movement from within the breast to go into the lymph glands and these are the lymph glands under the armpit, these are the lymph glands behind your breastplate and they both sort of join up and end up in lymph glands in your neck and from that time point it can then travel into the bloodstream and go beyond. This is a picture of a cancer. So this tissue here is reasonably normal, but all this yellowy sort of stuff, and particularly this white stuff in the middle, all this is what a cancer looks like. So when you have um, scans of uh, your body and look at uh, bone scans and MRI, what the pictures are showing on those scans are these sorts of tissue abnormalities within the organs that we're looking at, okay? So what happens uh, that allows a cancer cell to go beyond um, the breast and the lymph glands and end up in giving uh, women stage four breast cancer? So essentially when a breast cancer starts, if you uh, find the cancer very early and it's only confined to the breast, that's a stage one breast cancer. If the cancer has grown very quickly or it's taken a little bit longer to find the cancer, the cancer can get bigger and T1, T2, T3 are sequentially increasing sizes of cancer. And then if there is N1 or beyond movement, it means that the cancer has actually managed to get into the lymph glands, at least at this level, if not a little bit further. That's stage two breast cancer. Stage three breast cancer is all getting a bit worse. So larger tumors, more lymph glands involved, more extensive lymph glands involved, perhaps going up into um, your, your neck. So this is, this is still regarded as early breast cancer and this is stage three breast cancer. A variant of stage three breast cancer is inflammatory breast cancer. And I would just like to say in, in the last couple of years, there's been a bit of a, I'm not sure why, but there's been a little bit of a scare in the community that when women hear that they've got inflammatory breast cancer uh, or hear that term, they are extremely frightened because there's this overriding message in the community that inflammatory breast cancer is a death sentence incorrect. Inflammatory breast cancer is a clinical diagnosis and it's actually made by the eyes of the surgeon or the oncologist. It's not a pathological diagnosis, it's not a radiological diagnosis. And yes, it often is um, associated with a more aggressive cancer, but if the cancer is inflammatory in the breast for the first time and all the scans are clear to suggest there is no spread to other organs, inflammatory breast cancer is still regarded as stage three breast cancer. So again, I think you know, the, the, the very few women that get told they have an inflammatory breast cancer need to be aware it is not a death sentence. It, there are still uh, you know, many, many um, uh, evidence that shows that you can treat this aggressively and you can cure women with inflammatory breast cancer. Then we go to metastatic breast cancer. And metastatic breast cancer is a spectrum. But the diagnosis of metastatic breast cancer essentially means 
uh, no matter what the size of the cancer is in the breast, no matter whether the lymph glands in the armpit are involved or not, there is evidence proven that the cancer has spread and gone to other organs. There is no particular organ that always gets spread of breast cancer, as some people think. It must always go to the liver. It must always go to the bone. If it goes to a particular organ, you know, it's a better prognosis. It's a worse prognosis. I really, really want to teach you not to think of it that way because there are a number of factors that um, impact on whether a stage four breast cancer patient's cancer spread is better or worse. And it doesn't just rely on the organ that the cancer goes to, and neither does it uh, depend solely on how much of that organ is involved. Having said that, many of you will be aware that breast cancer cells like going to particular organs. They do like going to the bones. They do like going to the liver and the lung. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, for some patients, they do like going to the brain. Essentially, breast cancer cells can go to any single part of your body. I have seen it in every single organ that has living tissue. So that means you can't get breast cancer in your hair. <laughs> but beyond that, I have seen breast cancer in every single organ and in every single tissue of the body. Any questions? Okay, I'm, I'm going to repeat the questions just for the filming. So the question was, are we keeping statistics on uh, advanced metastatic breast cancer? Uh, as many of you know, we do keep statistics on early breast cancer. The answer is yes, but the statistics is very variable. Uh, I think one of the things that some of you will know who, who've known me for a long time is we pride on us, ourselves as having kept statistics on metastatic breast cancer for 20 years. Uh, and we have a very, very strong data set. We've published on this, and I'll talk to you a little bit about a study that we're in the middle of doing at the moment. I think one of the difficulties in keeping statistics is what statistics is relevant. And I think probably the things as a community of patients um, uh, touched by stage four breast cancer is you want to know what is the incidence of stage four breast cancer? In other words, are we doing a, a bad job and there are more women getting stage four breast cancer? Two, and I think this is really important, is are stage four breast cancers getting the best evidence-based treatment? Because if they are, you know with confidence that that's going to be reflected in best outcome and survival. And that's the third bit of information you want to get, is what is the survival of women with stage four breast cancer? Uh, you know, who are the patients who need more attention and which are the groups of women who are doing really well? Um, unfortunately, it's very hard to collect that data um, on both a institutional level or a national level because, number one, um, you have to have a, a complete agreement into what kind of information is, is collected, and I can just say you, no one ever agrees on that. Two, it actually is a very important um, uh, aspect. The data has to be con uh, collected consistently and accurately, and no one does that really very well. I think cancer registries, the Cancer Council, the hospital cancer registries that I was involved in, the public hospitals, they try their best in collecting at least the incidence. So how many cases of metastatic breast cancer do they see a year? Um, and they do that, I think, reasonably well. But I think in terms of the outcome data, in terms of how long does a metastatic breast cancer patient live for, you know, what are the cure rates? What are the complete, complete remission rates? Um, nobody collects really good data for that. Uh, but you can, you know, if you're interested, you can certainly look at um, some of the databases that come out of the big cancer centers in the US, which, you know, in a sense uh, is a bit similar to what happens in Australia. But one of the things that we certainly um, will be doing and will be, uh, and will be making available to the community is statistics. And given that, um, uh, I've seen now over 4,500 patients with breast cancer, over 1,000 uh, patients with metastatic breast cancer. We have a very rich data set, um, and we're doing ongoing uh, research with that. So this information will come out. Sometimes it doesn't reach your attention because it gets published in medical journals. But I think one of the things that we've certainly talked about within the group is that you know, our website is used a lot for access to information. So we're going to make this information available to you on the website. In the short answer, the question was, um, nurses have advised uh, you that uh, breast cancer going to the bones is better than going to other places like the brain. Okay. The short answer is yes, uh, but the, you can't make a general statement like that because I have a, a number of women with brain metastases which have been treated in remission and they're actually dying and progressing of bone disease. It's all about the pace and the biology and the response and the volume. 
So for any woman who has both disease in the brain or the bone or the bone in the liver or the bone in somewhere else, it's a question of what's the volume, what's the impact on her quality of life, has she got a complication of the bone disease, i.e. fractures, pressure on spinal cord, other things like that. So, you know, the bone uh, is a very common site for spread. It can be a blessing in some women. Uh, many of the women that are, are, are cured have had only bone disease, but it can be absolutely devastating and the life threatening uh, site of disease for many others. So, it, you know, to make a general statement is actually incorrect.